Greetings once again, Leica fans and Leica fam. Welcome to another installment of Leica Conversations, our ongoing series of talks and live webinars designed to spark conversations that inspire your visual storytelling while connecting with our Leica community. I'm your host today, Leica Antonio Di Benedetto, Leica product specialist for Leica Camera USA. Uh, and I am so happy that all of you are here once again with us. Uh, we've got another great program with two very special and very unique guests here to share uh, images and perspectives with you. Like I said, we've got two special guests today. Uh, you may know both of these photographers from prior Stay Home with Leica programs that we've done, as each has come on before to share their skills and voices. Uh, now here on Leica Conversations, we get to see some of their latest work with our latest camera. Uh, so both of our photographers today have been shooting with the new Leica M10R rangefinder camera, and they are here to share their perspectives and talk about their images made using it. Uh, we have Ruddy Roy coming to us now, I believe from Cleveland uh, after a fresh move, and Stefan Vanesco uh, live from his studio in LA. Uh, so Ruddy is of course known for his street photography and street portrait work while Stefan captures life on the streets and often above uh, through his aerial photography uh, to bring new perspectives, perspectives to familiar places. Uh, what unified them for this talk today is that through their all angles, near and far, they have been now using the same camera, the Leica M10R, and they have some new work to show. Uh, so with that, I am so honored to welcome both Ruddy Roy and Stefan Vanesco to our conversation. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> doing good as well. Good as well. Happy to be back with you guys. Happy to be here to talk some photography, talk about this camera. Fantastic. Um, so again, thank you both so much for, for taking the time. Uh, it's such a treat to talk with you guys anytime, uh, but especially when we've just recently launched a new camera, you guys have been using it, and you each have some very special and really cool uh, uh, images to share with us. Uh, we've got, a you know, and just for, for the audience, we've got uh, a bunch of images from Muddy's, a bunch of images from uh, from Stefan, pretty split uh, even. Uh, and, you know, we're going to maybe tackle uh, Ruddy's first and then Stefan's in the latter half, but we're going to, you know, we're going to get a little conversation going because you both have so much insight, insights to share. You do things a little bit differently, but there's also many parallels in your work. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing, you know, from what you guys think and feedback from you guys' work uh, across not just me to you. Um, so, with that being said, um, I'd love to jump into some some first images uh, that Ruddy that you shared with us. Uh, what can you tell us about all the things you've been shooting with the M10R? And then I'll show it off, lead off with this image. Um, hi everybody um, from far and wide. Thank you, Leica USA and Antonio, for having me on today. And um, I say sh big shout out to Stefan. I'm happy to be here with him talking about mm -hmm. how we use this camera. Um, so one of the things that I, I think will never change about me is this idea that I am, I am just a photographer. Um, even, as I use, even as I received this camera, the first thing I thought about was how useful was it going to be on my assignment work or on the street. And um, I have to say that it went above and beyond anything that I expected it to do. Um, I was really excited to go back to the hotel because I took it all. I was actually in Tulsa when I first got it. When I went back to the hotel and I saw how beautiful the, 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 the color was on my computer. And I immediately thought about, you know, this transition that I'm going through now where I am trying to do more fine artwork um, with the idea of being able to talk about my work in front of an audience. So I was completely blown away by what the dynamic range and what it did in the shadows, in the highlights, um, and how, how, how large I could, I could print these images. These first two images are a part of a series on this idea that black men are now allowed to wear masks. Um, I, I wanted to, to remain true to who I am and though some people might think that I'm, I am political, I am not at all. I'm actually somebody who like to, to stay in the lane of 
what it means to be a part of the black experience. Um, I realize that now that our country, our, our, this country is going through um, a very tumultuous period in its history that I wanted to photograph work that stayed in the pocket, that talked about what we're going through without being overbearing. I, I always try to be as simple as possible, but be as true as, true as possible. So these images I shot in my backyard using the, the tenor and the 50 millimeter noctilux. And I just wanted to photograph this idea of black men no wearing mask and how serious and difficult this can be because it, they can be killed for wearing masks. Yeah, that's uh, really compelling. And you, you mentioned to me, uh, Ruddy, how, um, yeah, like, you know, the, the idea of wearing a mask uh, for for many black men, it's 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 a worry. It's a concern because you know it's a in the past it would be something that um, is seen as a threat, uh, right. know, a robber right. or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, then, then you you took this idea, and you know you, you did this. You, you did a bunch of portraits. We have another one here, um, and then you have more more images now to share. Also, um, where where the American flag is factored in and, and used. Um, what can you tell us about maybe this image and then the, how it transitions into, into the next ones? So I, read, I wrote something this morning, which I'm going to read as fast as possible, because I think it, oh, awesome. it, it, it encapsulates this idea of what I was trying to do with the flag images. Fantastic. And I wrote, I pledge is a very strong commitment. Someone reminded me yesterday that Marcus Garvey said in 1921, Show me the race of the nation without a flag and I will show you a race of people without any pride. This is where the controversy starts for me. For as long as I have lived in the United States, I have witnessed a group of people searching for stars and clinging to stripes that have both eluded them or whipped their bodies like in a ritualistic flagellant. Um, I've always been fascinated by the relationship between black folk and the flag. Um, and this idea of pride to an object or a symbol that sometimes is not very kind to them. And so for years, it's very casual. It's never, it's never a real series. It's just something that I observe every day or every week or every month that black folk have always clinged to this flag that has sometimes never been kind to them. So this is what this series is. Mm. That's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that, uh, that, that writing too. Um, you know, and, and, and yeah, these, these images are very striking and you, you have now more um, of the, you know, we saw now the, the masks and, and what you were starting to say with that. And then we see the, the flag being utilized as part, as a mask, which we see many people doing. Um, and now we transition into, yeah, more of these, these images. And again, I'll just call out that, I mean, the skin tones and, and, and the, the dynamic range of, uh, of this camera is just fantastic. And I love how it's visible in these, uh, these previous images we just uh, looked at. So just as they give a quick, uh, a quick review. Um, but as we now shift over uh, to some beautiful colors that you've captured among uh, the red, white, and blue. Uh, so take us through some more of these, these images that are coming up. So, so the, the idea of, of the flag being backward, um, what we have been talking about started with Colin Kaepernick kneeling um, in a football game. And so here you have the flag masking a, a sign that said no standing um, at an intersection, which is where I think this country is. And I think it was beautiful talking to Stefan yesterday um, and him looking into this image and was able to extrapolate so many other symbols, um, which was which is what this is for me. This is not, I mean, this is one of the few images that you'll ever see of me photographing without somebody in the image. But I think this flag, this image of this flag encapsulates the whole idea of why I'm doing this flag series. I want to be able to hit you with ideas, symbols within the picture, within the frame. Yeah. 
Stefan, um, you know, I, I, I want to then ask you like some, some of the things that you've seen in, in just some of Ruddy's work. Um, cause, uh, I know that, uh, you guys have kind of met a little bit here and there, but you know, you really saw a lot of each other's work just recently as while you're both using the same camera. Yeah. Getting uh, a chance uh, to check so, out his images, his, his images yesterday was like pretty exciting. Cause like, I immediately was just picking up my um, perceptive notes of what I was interpreting through his photographs. So, you know, I think as we go through, if you want me to chime in at all on like just parts please, or, you know, moments of, please. you know. Yeah, please. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this was, uh, so now Ruddy, now take us through some of these. I mean, some of our images here that we're going to share are taken in different places, different locations. Um, I believe this was in Manhattan. This was in my Take us through, through this one. So, you, you have this amazing skill of being able to talk to anyone. I've, I've seen it firsthand and, and, and stop almost anyone to get their picture. And it's really just a talent that's so amazing. As in yesterday while we were on the phone. Um, yeah, that we image got is that, the, yeah. Right. Um, but we'll get to that. This, this image, again, I love signage. I love using words. And I, I love cropping where I crop. So if you read the, the word across, you can't read it all because we don't have any kids. On, on. But there's one letter and paradise. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that for this black man, this isn't paradise. And so that's how I see every day. Like I see images and I see words and I try to put them together to create a narrative that anybody without my caption can see the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always like it's like a layer and depth that you have uh, then you play off of um, the symbolism. Uh, yeah, letter, lettering and you know graphics that right. are, and it makes sense, especially in New York where you often, often photograph there's always so much uh, wall art signage, uh, yes, signage, yeah, graffiti murals. And it's also, yeah, I think, absolutely. the like the honesty, the honesty within the portraits. He gets like relaxed and you know, good eye contact. You know, like just a sense of like trust and comfort with the photographer and you know the subject that he's making a portrait of. I'm I'm also always trying to play with the 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 symbolisms that are, are very subtle. Like we know what he's eating. Um, and, and everybody loves chicken, but, but fried chicken has been associated with African-Americans and melon. And I'm actually, I actually have a melon image that I did not put in this slide. But again, it's embossed with this, the colors of the flag. Um, and what I'm trying to say here in this picture is that everybody, but everybody likes fried chicken and, and melon. But here, uh, but here is an a, a image of an African-American who becomes this, this, this portal to talk about what it means to love everything that's American. Um, yeah, it's, and, and it's, now- in, inclu ahead, Including the Nike, the Nike socks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, so when you're photographing a lot of these these images and using the M10R, I know you, you we showed a couple of Noctilux images. I saw some people are asking, uh, what lens is, is this one? Twenty eight. Are you using twenty eight, 28 28. millimeter? So will you Everything use else? pretty much anything for a portrait? Whatever you feel like, whatever you're in the how doesn't matter. Whatever you, you I dedicate whatever, one lens for a portrait. Whatever I have when I'm shooting. Um, I recently <laughs> got I, I recently got a thirty five and. That is that thirty-five millimeters. Usually, my let me see if I can. Is it on the screen? Is it? Can anybody see it? So thirty-five millimeters, my my fifty, my go-to, my that's how I, I see in the world. But I remember the thirty-five was on another camera, and all I have on the on the R, which by the way I call Rasta, is a ten R Rasta. <laughs> and, and, it, and if and if anybody awesome. know. If anybody know what Rastafarianism is, it means one. It means that we're all one. And so I have also embraced the tenor as a very spiritual, for me, a very spiritual instrument. And so my idea is to go out and try to create images that are not divisive, that, that, that speaks to our oneness. So I call it the tenor Rasta. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody said Rasta love. <laughs> um, awesome. So yeah, it's any lens I have. It's, it's whatever mm -hmm. I have, I use in the moment. Great. And, and Stefan, you do, I mean, you do a lot of portraits. You do, um, you know, some, uh, some uh, studio portraits as well, of course, um, and, on location, kind of an, a variety. Um, do you, for, with an M especially, like, do you use a certain thing for a portrait or do you have go-to lenses? I've been a big fan, like the 50 is what's always on. My M's of all types, digital film, um, works great for the aerial work that I do. Works great for street stuff, abstract, fine art, portraits. So that's my go-to. And I've kind of been really intrigued by higher focal lengths, 75, 90, um, and just compression, getting in a little bit closer, a little bit tighter, more specific within the framing. So those are usually uh, my go-tos, but that 50 APO is what's always uh, on one of my Ooh. M bodies. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great one. And I've seen your 50 APO. It looks like it's it's been used a lot in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so Ruddy, take us through. Yeah, we have another image here and, and I've seen some people commenting on the, on the colors. Um, I'm going to ask both of you guys, maybe Ruddy, you can, you can start off of uh, how you, how you guys, what you guys think of the, the colors of the M10R um, as you walk us through some of these images. Now, this one, of course, is a little more heavy because of the content we're seeing the poster um, but another one that you don't have, I don't really see many people except maybe who's on the bus. Um, right. What can you tell um, us about, about, about this? The, the, the one, of, one of the first things I noticed, and I mean, and, I, and I, it wasn't even, I wasn't even on the street. I was in my backyard in New York with a, with a um, V flat. Um, simple setup, no, no, no light. It was all natural light. I remember the first image I shot, the first portrait I shot was the, the, the image of the brother in black and the orange that shot out when the sun hit it. And I was just like, the dynamic range on this is bananas. Like, it, I mean, I did not have to touch it. I did not have to do anything as long as you're able to, as long as the light was able to shine on that section of him, the colors just popped. And I was just like, this is so different from the SL or even, I'm in love with the, the M10D, just the whole idea of not looking. I'm in love. Mm -hmm. But this, the colors that I got from the R rivaled everything else that I had in my bag. Um, mm -hmm. The colors just popped without being touched, without having going through any post process. Uh, that sold me on how I started to see my images printed at 30, to 40, 30 by 40 immediately. And, and I do love my, um, can't remember the, 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 the thing that Eric, Eric prints all my work with a, a paper that I truly love. Um, but I immediate, immediately started to picture those, those prints. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I think we're gonna have, uh, we have great examples of, um, uh, of the color tell that person, uh, quality tell that coming person. out of this camera. Tell that person, uh, sorry. Eric, Eric Luden does print my work. The yeah, person was asking. Yeah, someone in the chat. Yeah, Eric Luden D of Digital Silver Imaging DSI. Shout out uh, over in Massachusetts who prints all of uh, all of Ruddy's work. Um, and you know, as as a quick quick aside, uh, now uh, contrasting that, Stefan, you do is it all your printing these days all in in house and doing it yourself? Because I know, and you you've been seeing some of the color quality coming out of the M10R firsthand and and printed. Yeah, uh, I have a. a desktop printer that can go like 17 by 22 then i have a large format that can do 24 by 36 um just yeah i've been in the printing for a while now and it was kind of fun to be able to go shoot and then play with the different paper structures and types and see like how the colors translate and how they relate um along with contrast depth scale that comes from using um such a powerful sensor with like 40 megapixels uh, it, it was like the experiment, like how Ruddy was saying, him running back to immediately check out the files and see like how they were translating, you know, on his uh, computer. Like same thing for me, it was just like jumping into the printing and just doing that, you know. Yeah, it's great to get, you know, first hand, first hand experience uh, through the different routes that, you know, many photographers may be, whether they just go to, they, they have a preferred lab doing their printing or uh, like in your case, you know, doing their printing themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So Fantastic. And, and, and I think it really speaks to, uh, yeah, the, the, the camera is so great with, uh, with color, with dynamic range, as well as the, the resolution, of course. Now, gear talk aside for a moment, uh, Ruddy, can you take us through this image uh, and, and where, how you decided to 
craft this framing um, and what the shadows speak to you? Um, I was actually on my motorcycle. I had just picked it up. I was riding in Bushwick. Um, I always have, um, I have a Temba who I, I asked, I don't know if you know Pito. Um, I, I, I saw him one day and I said, I needed a, a, bi a bag that I can ride with that is able to keep my cameras in it. Jumped off the bike. I saw this, this woman. Um, I know that she's of Latin descent. And I saw the flag over her. And I saw that that was the image. But then I looked and I saw that the shadow was tilted away from her. And it just became a different image for me. This idea that immigrants come here to be under the banner of whatever this country has to offer, but find themselves outside of what this country has to offer just because of their immigrant status. Not their status as a legal or illegal, just being an immigrant, a new immigrant, as opposed to be an older immigrant. Um, mm. And it, was just, it, it just framed this whole idea of what America is in 2020, um, the climate, the political climate we are in. And it, it spoke to that, that, that social justice story or narrative. Well, that's the one thing I noticed when looking at your photos yesterday. And um, like, even if um, you go back to the previous photo, Antonio, real quick, it's like any photos that have uh, a, you know, a person in it, they're always kind of like looming in the shadows with a flag involved. Like they're never prominently played, you know, like the light's not shining on them with the flag. So the, the gentleman with the flag draping over him, he still loomed within that shadow. This, you know, a woman on the bus is loomed within the shadow. The woman on the sidewalk loomed within the shadow. And I think when, you know, the other photos come up, it was just like this constant theme that, you know, just worked amazingly together with uh, connecting all these photos. Be be because I wanted to talk about, I didn't want to talk about um, the, 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 the words that are being floated around right now, because that has nothing to do with the flag to me. The defunding the police has nothing to do with the flag. Um, Black Lives Matter has nothing to do with the flag. I wanted to talk about the flag as a flag, as a symbol, as a symbol that has gone around the world doing whatever, doing good, doing bad. I just wanted to, I wanted to pull the flag out of the conversation and talk about the flag and mm -hmm. what it represents for people. And that's all I've been doing with this, with this series. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to jump ahead because I, cause I want to show this image because I think it's very relevant to, to what Stefan was just mentioning and, and exactly what you're mentioning, where this image where we see the flag off limits in a way while it's being worn by a gentleman in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the foreground uh, as part of his, you know, his ensemble, part of his, his outfit. Um, Yet you can't yeah, see his identity, like you can't see his, his, his skin, his identity is lost within this picture. Um, the flag is what's pronounced. The flag at, at the back of him. And you, you usually relate things on people's back as burden. Um, or, or he's in shadow. And so he's not a path. He, the, the flag is out of reach for him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Stefan made a beautiful comment yesterday when he said, you know, it was walled off. It was gated off. And so he had no access to the flag. Which I really like, even though he's wearing it. Of course, yeah, um, yeah. Even if, if even some people that take the most pride in it, uh, to, right. you know, have, sometimes have it have it held off from them. Um, right. Now, for the, I think this one is is a uh, I think this was Fourth of July, and um, you said this one was Fourth of July as well. Kind of a little bit more of a fun of a fun one when we think of Fourth of July. I know I know many of our recent Fourth of July. Many of us, our recent Fourth of July was very different than what we're accustomed to because of COVID and social distancing. Um, but I, I, I kind of love the charm in this photo. Uh, well, you, this see, you see, the, you see, the drinks are social distancing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the the vitamin water is social distancing against Modelo, is social distancing against Coca Cola. Um, yeah. Again, if you notice the direction the flag is in just like the first flag image 
where it's backwards. My work, my work is supposed to be intentional. Like I, I, I look for things. I, I walk around with this idea of wanting to tell a narrative and wanting to keep overlaying the narrative until people get it. Somebody asked me if people still eat American cheese when they saw this image. <laughs> Well, it's almost like a, an evolution of like looking at just the, the food and the drinks at hand. It's like an evolution of 4th of July in America. Decades ago, mm -hmm. years ago, it would have been just Coca-Cola flag cheeseburger. You know, right. as the population Ooh. of America evolves and changes, you know, uh, obviously Modelo. more. Modelo. Yes, more and more la Latinos, you know, coming through to this country. Then That's you add that beautiful. and then just taste of people's you know, palates are changing. So you have the vitamin water. Um, so I think I, I see that, that, that makes me think of just the evolution of America because before Boy. you wouldn't have had the two other, you know? Nope, nope, nope. That's good. Love yeah. That. And, and yeah. if you want to go yeah. layer, and if you want to go layer deeper, Coca-Cola is such that. an American, it's such an American product. It's running low. Like, you know, <laughs> somebody, the essence of somebody, it's running low. <laughs> somebody also said the flag is slipping through the cracks. Yeah. Mm. Good, There's a lot to interpret in this chat. photo. Yeah. I love, I love these kinds of images and I, that's why I love when we get to talk about them like this because mm -hmm. there's so much, you know, you know, there's joy to be seen in these images. There's, there's conflict, there's strife, there's, there's a, you know, commentary, um, even in, in, in something that many people would see as like, you know, it's just a simple looking photo, but it has so much beauty to convey. Um, and now we have another, another photo. And now I want to jump to something you just made yesterday, Freddie. Um, and that is uh, this image, which um, why don't you tell quickly the story of, uh, of how this came together live. <laughs> we were on the phone talking about what we were going to do today. And I was sitting on the, the, the little stoop in front of the house. And I was talking about the flag, the flag. And then this guy walks across the street wearing this T-shirt. And while we're talking on, 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 on Zoom, I said, I have to go take this picture. And the camera was right beside me and I ran across the street. He was definitely hurrying. So I just said, you know, just stand there. Because the information for me is right in the picture. Um, and, and, and though we're not supposed to say anything controversial on this Zoom, one of the, as an outsider, one of my attractions to Robert Frank is his perspective as an outsider. He was able to see America differently because he was an outsider. One of the things that I've seen since I've been here is the demise of, or a lot of the insurrections, a lot of the riots, a lot of the, the burning down of houses, of properties, started because of a lie, that's, that's what I'm gonna say. A lie that was told on a black man by a white woman. That's as, that's as simple as I can say it. And so, again, our association with these symbols. Um, can, a, can a black man love Marilyn? Yes, but in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, that could get him hung. That implication makes this image so much more powerful to me. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and just to know that, and again, just I know this is maybe a little bit of inside baseball for everyone, but we were on this call. Uh, Stefan and I said, you know, go, go, go take that picture, like, oh, and, 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 and yeah, your AirPods were still connected. So we could actually hear a bit of the conversation you were having with the, with the gentleman. Uh, and I'm like, you know what, out of respect for Ruddy and his work, we're going <laughs> to mute you so that we don't, we don't eavesdrop, but we heard a little sure. bit about how quick you work. And, and, and it was, it was amazing. It was such mm -hmm. a great, uh, great moment. And th to know that you came back with this fantastic portrait that, you know, obviously you put the effort into the, the framing of, of, of what's behind the subject as well, uh, where the flag is in the perfect position. Um, yeah, I love it. So thank you again for sharing this, especially like last minute. Uh, such a, an excellent photo <laughs> and excellent, excellent words to go along with it. Um, I now want to jump to, I think this may be, may be the last image of Ruddy's we have to share before we shift over to, uh, to Stefan's work, um, where I think this image, uh, going back to the 4th of July topic and 
all the things that we talked about, um, you know, I think there's this image, uh, you know, we talk about a lot of, there's a lot of negative things that talk about that are going on right now, but this one, I love it. It's beautiful and it brings me so much hope. Um, yeah, this is an amazing shot, Ruddy. What can you tell us about how you made this? Um, because everything that I've just showed you um, has to account for, so why am I doing it? And I'm doing it for these two boys that I'm trying to raise and, and other boys just like them who are reaching for stars, who are reaching for stripes. Um, and I am hoping that my work is able to push the conversation and the narrative to a place that makes them freer, to a, make, to a place that makes them able to have more opportunities, to a place where they don't have to, to have the conversations that I had in order to feel freer or have more opportunities in this country. Um, this is my son, Mosiah. And this is actually one of the best 4th of July I've ever had. We were, every year, this is always shut down by the police. But I think because of all the controversy that's going around, the police kind of stayed away from um, the block this year. And my son was just, actually his hat fell. And he was asking somebody to, to pass him the hat. And this is the only time that the fireworks looked like this. Every other one was lame. This was the <laughs> only one. And I was, I'm happy that I was able to capture it. Um, because for me, his name is Mosiah. Mosiah and Yoshi are my hope um, for a better future. Everything that I'm doing is so that they can benefit uh, and, 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 and are able to bring this work that I've done into a newer place so that it can have a broader conversation. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing work and, uh, and amazing words, Ruddy. Um, yeah, uh, and, and I know like people are asking, and I mean, we got a lot of response in the chat about people just saying this is an incredible image and, and people loving this shot as soon as I put it up on screen, um, as well as, uh, of course, people, uh, you know, we're talking about the color palette and the quality. Um, I know, obviously, this is at 28 night. Um, mi by 28 millimeter. Do you, and oh, okay, great. And and then also, do you by chance know what, how high your ISO might have been? Because I know the image has a little bit 60, of grain. Sixty-four hundred. Gotcha. But the color, perfect. Thank F, you for, for letting F2, us know. F two one, F two point eight one twenty-five of one twenty-fifth of a second. You're you're a walking exif data man. It's crazy. No, no, no. You 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 gave me you gave me a thing that I was supposed to follow. <laughs> So I know I that know. The, imi the image has to be about <laughs> 60. So that's what I thought. So I knew it's in my head <laughs> what I was supposed to shoot this at. Gotcha. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, again, and, and color, you know, having maintaining color fidelity at, at the higher ISOs is, is of course uh, also also important. Oh, someone's asking, you're 28. Is Sumicron or Elmerit? Uh, Sumilar? Elmerit. 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 So 2.8 was wide open. Cool. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, Ruddy, thank you for sharing all these images with us. Uh, I love that we're finishing your selection on, on this one um, and, you know, that we can, uh, we can finish these, this series off with some hope. Uh, we've seen such a, such the beauty of, uh, you know, of the red, white, and blue and, and the colors of, of uh, you know, of our communities. And, and yeah, it's just fantastic. So, so thank you. Um, now, Stefan, I know maybe I think you found this image quite compelling, just as everyone else. Um, if you had anything else to, to say before we're going to shift over to your work, which we have some some more stories to tell. Boom. Yeah, I mean, aside from like finding out like the reason why he's gesturing his hand out, like without knowing that, I would just like my interpretation would be like celebration. We're getting to a better place, and he's reaching down to bring others up to where he's at. Like that's Ooh. what I take I take from that image. It's like, come on up here, things are a lot better. You know? That's what it is. That's lovely. No, no, no. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna get rid of my story, Stefan, and use yours. <laughs> I mean, that's as a viewer and just interpreting with like the the celebratory sky and the look on his face, like his his body language and the hand reaching out. Like that's just that's what I take away from it, is that he's he's reaching to bring others up to where he's at because it's a better place. I you know why that's that story so beautiful is because. When I first got to this country, one of the first quotes I learned was, each one teach one. And you're supposed to turn around and help the next person up. And that, that's just, I love that you said that. 
that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, sometimes I think photography kind of needs to be a lie and, and, and I joke about that, but it's because the story of like, oh, he dropped his hat. Like it, it's a fun, it's a good explanation, but you know, sometimes it's like, eh, just, just, just don't bother. Just don't <laughs> but I appreciate your honesty, Ruddy. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. So thank you again, Ruddy. Um, and, and, and Stefan, now we, we, as we transition over to your work and what you've shot uh, with mm-hmm. the M10R, um, you know, walk us through where, where, you know, we're going to have a bit of a narrative here uh, that yeah. continues on for, from Ruddy in some ways. Um, so you do some aerial work, uh, you mm-hmm. do stuff on the streets, you do, you know, model work, all kinds of different, different avenues of photography. Uh, walk mm-hmm. us through, you know, what you did with the camera and, and this lead image. For sure. Uh, well, real quick, just realizing the sequencing of photographs. So his last photograph was the night of 4th of July. This photograph is actually the morning of July 5th. So this is mm. day after 4th of July. Most Ooh. of that is, is firework smoke because LA just went <laughs> crazy again with like no official public celebration. Um, but going back to your question about the M- M10R, I think for me, cameras show us how to see um, the advanced megapixels and dynamic range and of everything of a new camera. It's, it's great to explore all avenues and how am I gonna see things differently with it? Um, so I was just kind of taking it through the paces and obviously, you know, from March till now, we've all been going through our own paces in life with everything. So I was just kind of like whatever mood I was feeling, whatever I felt like exploring, that's where I would go with the camera and just piece together, uh, the, the work that kept building on it, not really looking for something specific, but rather following feelings and then building that work from there. Um, so yeah, I mean, this opening image to me, I wanted to set first because it's setting the the story for the landscape of where I shoot Los Angeles um, and just a somber feeling like every, all the emotional roller coasters that we've all been going through as a collective as humans in this country. Like, I feel like that energy is, you know, going transcending up. Like, even if you're 1500, 2000 feet above the ground, you could still have a sense of somber of what's going on. And for mm-hmm. me, this image sets that tone. Yeah, so, 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 the, so the first time I saw this image, I saw it yesterday. I saw it as a small image. And I actually thought, if you didn't use the word aerial, the first thing I thought was graves, gravestones. Mm. Wow. Immediately, I thought gravestones. And Bob Marley has this song, um, Concrete Jungle. And mm-hmm. my, mind, my mind went to this idea that we build these, these things you know, that, that, that it has become our concrete jungle. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah for that's sure. A really, really cool insight. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So Stefan, you, you, I mean, you start with, we start with yeah, the, the city in, in uh, uh, what looks like a almost kind of tumultuous state, um, you know, with, with uh, the smoke and the fog. Now walk us through uh, some of these, uh, these street images. You go bringing us an aerial view um, and then taking us right down uh, mm-hmm. to the person level on the streets. Yeah, like the aerial views, the opening scene, setting setting the place. I'm like this. These are images that's going on the ground. I mean, um, what I'm sensing from all types of people is almost um, a sense of tiredness, a sense of exhaustion. Um, you know, this gentleman downtown waiting for the bus. He thought this was his bus, the wrong one. Drives by and puts his hand on there, and just you know, his body language just kind of like just feels defeated. And I think that's a an emotional feeling because we've all been consistently going through something for months now that you know a lot of people are getting hit with such a feeling yeah absolutely the the, the level of exhaustion and yeah that moment um i love how the colors though work you know this this, this mm-hmm. like i love images with controlled color palettes and color palettes where it's almost like a black and white image but it's mm-hmm. like a, this image is basically red and white um you know and, well, and it's well i also, think that's been like that's been like the fun thing for me with the M10R is, you know, I, I, I love, I'd probably say 90% of my work is black and white. I would bought the mm-hmm. M10 monochrome, I think in March, like right before shutdown and right before COVID. So shooting with the M10R was this like re really exploration of color and approaching making photographs and approaching it with a certain intent of use of color uh, within the photograph. Yeah, fantastic. 
I think I'm gonna we're, we're gonna pick your brain a little bit as we continue through some of these images. I know people have asked in the chat and in the in the Q and A already uh, from the start about getting your insights on the M10 monochrome versus the the M10R. Uh, mm. But before we jump into more the more gear talk, please take us through some a few more <laughs> yeah. images. Yeah, this is the Beverly Cinema off of uh, Beverly Boulevard, owned by Quinn Tarantino. Um, you know, weeks prior, they had a message on the marquee um, for COVID, like staying at home, we're going to get through it kind of thing. And obviously with the movement and everything that's been going on, they, they put this up and, um, you know, I love the kind of like uh, art deco uh, mid-century modern architecture of Los Angeles, which this theater like embodies. Um, you know, the way the lettering, I already touched on that yesterday, just the way the lettering is a little sloppy, but I mean, it, it, it can be interpreted as, as having a certain meaning. Um, I don't know, I think like this is the reminder too of what's going on, like what was the, the, the fuse that just lit everything that's really going on right now. There's been prior situations and George Floyd, you know, his unfortunate passing, like, it just yeah that sparked it so i just want that to be the reminder to people of like don't forget why we're all doing this or what started this and what you know the end goal can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely i just i just i just really like um the colors the the the, the muted colors the, or the pastel colors of beverly cinema that that pink behind mm -hmm. that sits on top of these really bright yellow and orange with this nice fat blue and 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 I, I i can tell you this that you know i was i i was able to spend four days with um george floyd's family and mm. when i went to the when i went to the church there was a moment where we were allowed to photograph freely inside the church and i remember walking down to the casket and i stood in front of the casket for four minutes without lifting my camera. I know it pissed off a lot of photographers who were like, let's go, let's go. But I, I really wanted to tell him thanks. Um, because everything that we're about to go through now was because of his sacrifice. And this image, this image is a thanks to his sacrifice. The beauty of this image. Um, because without, without maybe justice for George Floyd, maybe you would not photograph it. Mm -hmm. And one of the reverence I have for this image is that, that his sacrifice has allowed for this image to live out into the world. So it gave birth to this image. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my spiritual association with, with photography too. Beautiful. Appreciate yeah. that. Uh, it's true. It's, it's a, initiated not just a movement, but a movement in art and uh, and mm -hmm. and all the, the the amazing things like you guys are are creating. Um, and yeah, I've seen multiple comments on the you know again the color. Um, people have asked like a, 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 a just so everyone knows because I see a question about um, like are you know, these JPEGs out of camera processed whatever. Um, I know that you guys typically have a raw workflow. You usually shoot raw. Um, and then, you know, export JPEGs. These are JPEGs that we're looking at. Of course, we're looking at them, you know, uh, via Zoom. So um, even then, you know, there might be some fidelity that we're losing a little bit in the stream, uh, you know, mm -hmm. through, you know, whatever uh, limitations we might have. But uh, that being said, I think it really shines through in a lot of these images in terms of the color, uh, depth, dynamic range, and, and fantastic uh, image quality the camera has. Um, mm -hmm. But again, uh, there I go talking gear. Uh, Stefan, tell <laughs> us more about this, this image, th these, these continual images uh, of showing some of the protests. Yeah, this one, uh, they've been having the Black Lives Matter chapter of Los Angeles has been holding these ones every Wednesday downtown outside the Hall of Justice building, which you can read on the uh, structure in the background. Uh, just to protest the city DA, Jackie Lacey to get her out of office. And it's been really awesome to see it continually keep going and keep growing. And, um, you know, there, there were some people there speaking on issues and just the way the light was hitting this woman with her yellow mask or the yellow of her outfit, but also just, again, the, going back to the body language, like, you know, not, um, she's there, she's putting in the work, but it just says like uh, exhaustion, but I'm going to keep this moving. I'm going to keep this going. You know, she, she's pausing, listening, taking everything in. You can even see most of the bodies within the crowd. Everyone's just 
standing and taking in what's being spoken and what's being said. So I think that's like, was just a re really great moment to, to make a photo of. Two things. I mean, it's four, it's 400 years, bro. So it's 400 years and counting. Um, <laughs> and so that, that demeanor that you see is, man, you know what I'm saying? This fight continues, but there's so much yellow, that yellow that is, is on her. I don't know if that her, that's her bra strap, her mask, her bra strap, the pants she's wearing, mm -hmm. everything going forward up until maybe the middle of the row is just this sea of yellow. The dude, mm -hmm. the dude with the blue hat, yellow. Just, it's, and then the windows, mm -hmm. yellow. Love it. Love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and there's so much great color. Uh, I noticed, you know, obviously you guys have very great eyes for capturing uh, color and, 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 and these, uh, these color palettes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we see another one here, uh, which Stefan, I'm, I'm in love with this image. I'm in love with the, 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 the what it speaks to, um, but the color palette as well. Um, just the, the tones that you get. Um, you know, I love, mm -hmm. you know, the, the flowers uh, held up in that fist, the fist we see so much of, um, you know, and, and the flowers of it adds such a new depth of, of beauty. For sure. Um, the gentleman that he had these, and I think he just wanted to make a statement that if you're making a photograph of me, it's going to be with these flowers in my hand. He was giving them out to some people, you know, so I think it was a message of, of love and of power that that's what I took away from him, what he was trying to spread at the, you know, because we started up at that courthouse and then we, our hall of justice and we started walking through downtown and, you know, like he was just marching and holding it up and, you know, was able to get this, this framing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and here we see uh, that same gentleman, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a portrait of him. I mean, just wanted to put some kind of, you know, even though we're all wearing masks to put some kind of face to the guy who's like spreading it. this, you know? I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, and Again, another one where uh, the color palette speak to us a little bit though about um, this image and then we're gonna uh, shift gears on our, uh, on our, let's say our, our bridge to our outro. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this image and, uh, and what, it's, what it spoke uh, to the, you when you the, took it. What, what spoke to me is, is like, again, we're, you know, we're dealing with um, civil rights progression and, and change. Uh, we're dealing with an economy, we're dealing also with COVID. So, I mean, just the idea, like seeing this woman, you know, normally you might see a, a parent pulling kids in a cart for fun, but these young girls wearing a mask and, you know, not really being too affected by the mask and accepting that this is the new norm and it's probably going to be the new norm for some time and just wanted to also bring that into, uh, into the framing of photographs that, you know, we're, all, we're still dealing with, with COVID issues and, you know, as parents and kids, it's a whole thing. You know, and then as far as the color palette, I mean, you know, you get fortunate when you have a blue jeans walking around the corner, a blue that uh, cart that they're rolling in, you know. So for me, it just it just inserts the reminder that along with um, the other issues at hand that we're all trying to change, that we still have this 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 virus that we're dealing with. Mm. Yeah, stark reminder. And with, uh, yeah, with uh, innocence mixed in too. And then this is the, unfortunately, like, you know, um, we have, I'm sure many people have kids in their lives or uh, in their families that now are growing up in these, these times. It's also further challenges mm -hmm. uh, ahead still. Um, and, and we've got one more street level uh, uh, image. Um, uh, but the, again, the use of blue and the, the way you captured it uh, and that, that stark color. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, just walking through uh, downtown, uh, I think this was on Figueroa and 7th, so the sun is obviously west kind of shining through. And uh, again, just, you know, aside from subject matter, trying to contextualize color within the image, so between the sky to the street sign to his sunglasses and even the, little, the flag behind him over oh, his shoulder. My. Just I was about adding, to say, that, that little know. flag, that little flag. Yeah, it's peaking, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Now... As we as we we start to look upwards, though, uh, and, yeah. and you we, we we have the privilege of of you taking us on these the, with, with all the aerial work that you do, giving people mm -hmm. uh, glimpses into uh, you know uh, these beautiful places that we see every day, maybe, but from different perspectives. Uh, mm -hmm. Walk us through our, our our transition here. 
So, so this transition, this shot actually was me driving down uh, to the airport while I was doing the helicopter flight of, of the first image. And there's that smoke, morning after smoke from the fireworks, uh, the sun kind of hitting through, just shot, shot this from my car because you can't stand anywhere to get this photograph. So it just rolled down my window. I had a 35 on the M10R and, you know, just shot a few frames and one of them turned out being this of the timing. And I love it because from this image into the next one, it's, you know, ground level again of the place where I'm telling the story of and the leading line of the freeway bridge going up will, you know, take us up to uh, the next frame. Yeah. And here we go. Uh, seeing some of the beauty of LA uh, with mm -hmm. these, these little, uh, amazing light rays uh, peering down. Yeah. The, the, the feeling of this oh, just wow. kind of made me feel, you know, it's, it's a start of hope where the pockets of light are breaking through clouds breaking through darkness kind of shining onto places within the city um you know and it's an iconic freeway interchange the 10 freeway and the 110 in la um That's different nice. perspective of sorts but i mean the clouds are kind of starting to break and we're starting to get some light mm -hmm. yeah definitely i love that and, a lot uh, yeah same it's, it's a beautiful piece and a beautiful kind of segue um, and then that's also, you gave us another amazing perspective of something that uh, many of us may never see, may never look at from, from this point of view, uh, mm -hmm. especially in this way. Um, so uh, just tell, tell us about this image. And, and you put a lot of work into yeah. getting this. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I'm, I, I got, it was fortunate because uh, maybe a week or so prior to this, they started blasting it off the street. And then a councilman from Hollywood said, no, no, we have to keep this you guys have to fix and paint that back. So, I mean, they were already starting to remove it. And so once it was restored and I was doing a flight, we had a great clear sunny day. I was like, I have to make a photo of this just to have like for a significant moment in time. I mean, it's great that it's still there. I don't know how long it'll remain there, hopefully for some time, but I mean, you know, between what's written on the street, that message, looking the sidewalks of Hollywood Boulevard and Highland and look how there's no people. Like if you were to try to shoot this during a normal time, even if that message was written, it, there'd be traffic covering it, mm -hmm. you know? So to be mid afternoon on a weekday and to be able to have this opportunity to make a photograph of this, this message at this iconic intersection within Los Angeles, I don't know. It just spoke volumes to me. And again, I mean, just the power, the power of that camera, doing an aerial and you know having the pilot bank down so i could see directly down i upon know. It, you know to, to I, oh, get I, that I, you know i wanted to tell you that I, I i did my one time ever doing photographs from a helicopter hmm. um i had to photograph the in utah the spiral mm -hmm. and oh my god that bank that mm -hmm. oh my god with the windows open the door Oh, <laughs> yeah Lord. yeah yes <laughs> yeah because when you're flying they got to completely tilt it and then they go in a circle down yes as you're shooting so then they got to pull oh. out and if you want to do it again they got to reset and then they Ooh. keep coming down so <laughs> yeah but i don't know yeah, i mean it's, it's like... just it's, it's it's like a centerpiece to a big movement that's going on and just feel fortunate to be able to make a photograph of it to have and to share in the future that's beautiful yeah, that's amazing. And now with this beauty uh, you know, of uh, an urban landscape, uh, uh, we also now with our, the final image we have to share, but I, I wanna ask you guys a couple more questions before we wrap up. Um, this just beautiful scene, uh, I think you said, you mentioned hope a few times and what a perfect send off uh, uh, for our images here. Yeah, I mean, Stephen. what I just took away from this in correlation with everything else, it's you have the pockets of rays coming through and now it's like if we keep collectively as, as humans, as humanity, just pushing through everything and keeping our eyes on the destiny of change that like stuff opens up, you know, like you got to weather the storm and then the clouds part and, you know, you know, the idea is that we could all be in a better place together. That's the goal. Yeah. Lovely, man. These are amazing, amazing photos that you guys have shared and, and shot uh, with the M10R. Now we, um, I really appreciate you guys' time. We've got some questions that I think one, one question that uh, I see, I've saw a few people ask. So I think people are dying to know. 
Um, you guys have used a variety of, of Leicas as well as Leica M's. Uh, you guys were some of the first to use the M10R. Uh, and you both have experience with other M10 cameras. We've had some people ask, like, you know, I've got an M10P, uh, you know, what am, what am, how much more am I, what am I going to see uh, with the M10R? We talked about the color quality resolution. Can you guys speak to that, that comparison? Because just, maybe just to the average person, it seems like it's a similar camera, uh, but we've seen some, I think, kind of game-changing uh, qualities of this camera here. All right. Um, I, I think one of the, the, the first things I saw was how, much more I got from the dynamic range, how much more detail was in the shadows and how, how much more color I got out of each image. Um, and I like to print, my standard print starts from 30 by 40. And so I just, I, I just started to imagine how much more saturated my colors are going to be because of some, the, 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 the beauty in the dynamic range. Um, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, it allowed me to even ask more of the camera, to, um, to push more, to, to expect more from, from, from each situation that I was in. I wasn't limited to, to oh, I can't, I can't photograph with this, with this much, um, with this li little light, because I didn't know if there, it was going to be um, information into the shadow. With the 10R, um, I was able to photograph in situations that I could not use my 10D. The one I have is a 10D. Um, mm -hmm. I could, I could, I, that, that would be too much for that camera. With the 10R, I was able to go deeper into, into the shadows to get, to get more information. That I can speak to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my take on it is depth and scale. Like, aside from color and robustness of the dynamic range, it's, it's, it's depth and scale. When you make your photograph, like, if anyone's shot with a medium format camera of any time, digital, analog, like, you see that depth and scale in it. That's the one thing I would tell people, what's well, it like shooting with it? I'm like, it literally feels like you're shooting with an S system, a medium format camera because the files you get are just that extraordinary. Uh, you know, I had to, been shooting M's for a while, and the 24 megapixel is great, but if you feel like you might want something more, then that's when I say the M10R comes into play, because it's just once you start seeing those files, you, 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 spoil, right. you spoil yourself. You know, it's like, what you thought you didn't need, and then you shoot it, and you're like, wow. Because for me, in the end, I think for a lot of photographers, we all want to have the highest quality image we can get from our cameras mm -hmm. you know and not you know 24 megapixels is great but when you see these files it's very tempting to think like i might need this because i in the end i want all my photos to be as rich and powerful as the ones i can make with this camera you know i've i've, I've never this is that's not to tell somebody to go buy a camera is not how i i try to 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 encourage somebody to buy a mm -hmm. camera. Um, I, have, I have been completely satisfied with 23 and 24 up until this, this, this. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, yeah, no, for sure, for sure, yeah. I don't complain about ergonomics. I don't complain. If I buy a camera, I learn how to use the camera and learn how to use the camera with its limitations. This camera allowed me to go into the shadows and for the shadows not to break away when I started to demand of it more information. Mm -hmm. if, if, if that's something that you want, this is, this is why you should get this camera. Mm -hmm. I was able to go in and open up these areas under here that are sometimes deep in shadows mm -hmm. here. You don't always have the capacity or the, the, the resource of having a flash or a strobe around you. Just as simple as doing your street photography with ambient light or the sun. Mm -hmm. I was able to, to ask of those files things that I kept, could not ask a 23 megapixel camera for. Yep. And, and you guys have both used uh, 
medium format systems extensively as well. Yes. Um, so I know that, you know, like you guys have used the S system, you've used other medium formats and, um, you know, here you get this kind of, both of you kind of spoke to me about the quality you're getting from it in such a small package, you know. With the yes, you're, 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 able, you're able to talk to the, the, have a conversation with the S family by using the small camera. <laughs> it's like, that. it's I like, it, it's, no, it's like, yeah, seriously, it's like when you, it's, I have a 15 year old son now who he'll see me talking to men my age and he will walk up to the conversation. Now, I don't mind you walking up to the conversation. You just should have something to say. And it, and it shouldn't be something stupid. You should be able to. And so I'm starting to invite him in my conversation. This is all the, this is all the, 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 the R felt. The R felt like it could come up to the S conversation you know, and hold its own, have a conversation, yeah. talk about the dynamic range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Now, all right. So my final question, I think, because I, I know somebody was asking if, I, if, if has been waiting uh, uh, for the answer. Uh, Stefan, you can speak to a position that's pretty unique. You have the M10 monochrome and you've used the M10R. So some final feedback on, on comparing the two, how you've, you've seen those results compare uh, before we wrap up. I would say the the de like the details of photographs you make with either system are on par with each other sharpness, uh, contrast. You know, um, the M10 monochrome from not having that color filter is going to have a different kind of reach. You know, you know I did aerial work at 100,000 ISO with it, and for a black and white image, I loved it. Like it was just insane. Um, mm -hmm. But with that being said, I think one of my concerns before getting the camera was I'm, I was curious how the high ISO on with the color filter on the M10R was going to hold up and it definitely surpassed what I was expecting. Um, so I think both cameras are on par. You are going to get a little bit more of a, I don't want to say cleaner reach because it's all user defined, but the M10 monochrome just has a different ability without that color tray. M10R is on par with it in every other way, you know, from then dyna like dynam dynamic range. It, it, has on its own and everything else. So is this a matter, do you like color black and white more, or, you know, do you want to convert your colors to black and white? It's that, that's where you got to go with it. Um, I would, Absolutely. I would say Antonio, I used it for my last national geographic assignment on COVID. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. The, I'm talking about the monochrome. Um, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Sorry. Um, it's okay. <laughs> oh, um, I will say this one thing about the camera. Um, again, it's your choice. But I will say that these two cameras are definitely the future for, for Leica and Leica M's. Um, it, is, it is, if anybody wants to join this conversation, those are the two cameras you start with. Because they have certainly, all, every image I shot for that assignment was sharp, great contrast, um, Beautiful dynamic range. I, I was able, I was able to 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 use, to to get my blacks black and my white white when I went into post process, um, and I do own still own the the the, the two four six, and it was an, it was literally a Grand Canyon leap between those two cameras. A complete. I could not, I could not even go back to. I had to look at the the two four six and and be like. Um, I gotta make that jump. No, I'm serious. It, it was, no, yeah, it was, I mean, it was night and day. Yeah, night and day. Yeah, that's great. I uh, really appreciate both of you guys' feedback. So everyone, we gave you there a bunch of gear talk at the end for one that stuck around. Uh, but, you know, so we've gotten some amazing insights and, and beautiful work from both Ruddy and Stefan to share, uh, as well as some fun, uh, some fun tech talk uh, on the M10R, M10 monochrome, uh, and, and all, all things M and Leica. Uh, I want to thank you guys again. And for, for those of you uh, still with us, uh, definitely check out uh, Ruddy and Stefan on their Instagram and, and Twitter, uh, at Ruddy Roy and at Stefan Vanesco. Uh, please feel free to share your feedback with us uh, and, and reach out to us uh, and, and follow us on Like Camera USA and Like Academy USA. Uh, I am, again, so grateful for, for everyone being here for us for this, uh, this program. Guys, thank you so, so much uh, for your time. Uh, for this work that you've created, for all the things you continue to do 
uh, with all these beautiful, amazing cameras and the capabilities that you guys have when they're put in your hands, well, the capability you guys, you guys have day to day. Um, it was amazing to share these stories with you and, 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 you know, talk, have this great, you know, three person conversation. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. And thank you everyone for being here with us. So I was definitely happy, ready. Feel free to uh, say hi to everyone and say goodbye. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, I'm just, I just want to say happy independence, Jamaica. Ah. <laughs> there we go. It's a birthday today. That's awesome. Well, have a good celebration. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Again, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Ruddy. And we'll see everyone hopefully next time on Like a Conversations.